So good morning and welcome to another episode of Better Business, Better Life. Today I'm here with Wade Jackson, who is the founder of the Covert Theatre and also Sexy Monkey Pants at Inspired Learning. Now that has to be the most inventive um, title I've had on this show, but welcome, Wade. Thank you. Good to have you here. So um, you're going to tell us all about your story of you know life, the universe and everything, but let's get started with a personal and professional best, first of all. A personal best? Well, that would be my children. So ah. yes, I have a four, uh, almost 15-year-old daughter and a 12-year-old son. So that they're kind of my um, light yep, and light and love of, of the world. Yeah, Perfect. And professionally? Professionally would be uh, opening a second improv theatre um, and surviving a global pandemic. <laughs> yeah. uh, we were just talking about that a moment ago. We? Like, yes. uh, yeah, so tell us about the Covert Theatre. Tell me the little story behind the, well, big story behind the Covert Theatre. Well, this is actually the second uh, version of the Covert Theatre. I, the, I built the first one in 2001 in K Road. Um, and that was from touring internationally and seeing other, and especially in the States, seeing improv theatres and going, wow, you can have a, your own venue. And uh, So I was uh, unemployed at the time, so I had time on my hands um, and uh, borrowed some money and built a theatre. And then they had that for four years. And then I got, I was getting drawn more into the corporate world. I was getting a little bit tired of being the poor starving actor. Yeah. And um, when I closed that down in 2005, I thought, well, one day I will um, open it up again. And that one day was 2020. Not Which the greatest, was, no, not the saying. greatest year to open a live <laughs> entertainment venue, but because uh, if because you're around the corner from us at home, and I mean, you you literally just opened the doors as the. Well, we know we actually we couldn't open. Because, couldn't open yeah, the pandemic. Gonna, yeah, we're going to open in March, and then the yeah. then the, the lockdown happened, and so uh, we didn't get to open because uh, we were almost fin- hadn't finished building. We didn't open until end of June, and then of course we've probably been. I haven't done the maths, but probably about um, equal measure of open and lockdown and closed yeah, yeah. fair enough yeah. so what why covert theater what 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 sort of oh because improv is such a beautiful art form it's been very good to me both professionally and personally and uh, my whole idea is it's kind of modeled on a place in um, chicago called second city it's about how do i breed uh, uh have a home for creative kiwi talent and it's basically a breeding ground so it's not a venue for hire. It's um, we have like over hundred members. People come in. We have a junior program, um, school holiday program, and people learn the life lessons that come from uh, improv, and they take that into their personal lives and on stage as well. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so it's a breeding ground for talent. Fair enough. This is not your first business, is it? Uh, well, it was my first one originally, and then I yeah. paused it to get into the corporate world, uh, which has ended up being inspired learning, uh, and then. Um, Kind of had my uh, breakthrough moment back in 2015, where I was, I was uh, growing that business globally. We had um, uh, David Covey, uh, the son of the late Stephen Covey mm-hmm. from Seven Habits, and uh, he was our global distributor, growing that business. And I was traveling around the world, uh, you know, sleeping in hotels, living on airplane, eating airplane foods, and away from family, and not very happy, but growing the business. And uh, just had a moment where I was like, "What am I doing?" You know, I was like 15 kilos overweight, wasn't doing the performance side of things, and wasn't very happy. And so um, made a decision to make some big changes in my life yep. and um, get back into the theatre more. So now I have a much better uh, balance of doing the corporate training and speaking and facilitation yep. and also the um, improved performance. And what was it, the straw that broke the camel's back? Like, you know, you say you woke up one day 15 kgs yeah. overweight and going, what yeah. am I doing? But what was the, was the actually, final thing? I was actually, I had some time off. But we, we went and did the uh, wife came with me. We went to the improv, uh, Hawaiian Improv Festival and then we took a week off. Uh, and we went to Maui for a week. I was just kind of sitting on the beach. And, you know, when you have that space and type of think and reflect, uh, I just realized you heard of builder syndrome, you know, the, the builder who fixes everybody else's house but their own. You know, I, was the, <laughs> I can relate to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, was, I was the uh, high performance coach who was fixing everybody else's life but not their own. So yeah. um, the hypocrisy and the guilt kind of hit home. I was just kind of like, what am I doing? Mm. So I, I know this stuff better than most. Why am I doing it? So I just put it into, uh, put, put some changes in place and created some rituals and, and um, yeah, living a much healthier uh, meaningful life yeah we talk about doing what you love with people you love and I suppose that's probably what was missing in all of that right yeah yeah I was just um I was just kind of chasing the wrong chasing the wrong dream of you know trying to build a global business and going for global domination all that kind of stuff you know it wasn't really what I was um really into yeah mm. okay 
you get and caught up in the in the hype of what you should be doing in business and what people say you should be doing as yeah. well yeah yeah, yeah i completely yeah, yeah. agree okay yeah. cool so we're back to the covert number two yes um and obviously opening just as the pandemic or about yeah. to open as the pandemic hit and talk, talk us through that a little bit of that story and how well, it's the, gone well the essence of comedy is timing and boy did i nail it <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that's been no it's been fantastic it's had rapid growth we've just uh, we've got so many people coming in like our uh, workshops are uh, oversubscribed we had to double stream them uh, we've got we had a full um, school holiday program the last one we ran uh, we have are able to offer some um, uh, scholarships to uh, disadvantaged kids in West Auckland and so we're just doing more of that um, so yeah it's really just growing again the, the heart of the at the essence of improv it's about connection yep and I think that the the lockdown the pandemic has showed us how important that is uh, to us as a species mm-hmm. and and improv is such a fun way to um, uh, to learn about yourself yep because uh, you, you're learning through play um and it's a really it's a it's a genuine form of play a lot of adult play is all very competitive based you know yeah. sports and so forth whereas this when you do improv there is no there is no other it's a, we're all we're all level on, a, on the level playing field so it's a fantastic beautiful way of learning about yourself mm. um, and being able to self-create self-discover self-express and so you do this work obviously with the people who are part of the team there but do you also do it with other people outside of that sort of well, so we have community. Yeah, well, we have well, we have um, those who come to our community workshops. So anyone can come and do as long as you're 18 years of age. We have other programs for our younger uh, younger members. Yep. But if you're over 18, anyone can come in and do our Improv 101. Yep. And then if they enjoy that, um, they can apply for 201. But that means you're now wanting to get on stage. Whereas a lot of people just come in and just get the lessons from the 101. So what do you get out of it? What what's the, what are the lessons you kind of learn oh, from the 101? I mean, we've had people. We've had people who have even got off their um, antidepressant medication from coming and doing the improv. Uh, we've had people who have been um, chronically shy. We've had uh, one person. She ended up joining the theatre. She had a social anxiety disorder. Really. So she was someone who didn't like anyone looking at her or anything like that, and she ended up, you know, just having that confidence and feeling safe. I think that's a real important part of what we do mm-hmm. is create a real safe environment for people where um, failure is just uh, is okay. It's part of the learning process. So I think um, you know it depends on what you you will get out what you need from the course so many people have different things that they will need mm-hmm. um, you know people who have imposter syndrome or think they've got to be you know prepared for everything in life and it gives you the courage to be yourself as well i think that's what's done for done for me yep uh and you get to a point where you know you can take what you do seriously but improv teaches you not to take yourself too seriously it's a very humbling art form as soon as you think oh i'm good at this boom you're, you're, you're <laughs> it was something else yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay so 101 is just sort of learning that the skills and learning how that can help you yes. and then 201 is where you actually get up on stage uh, at the end of the course yeah you get yep. up. so they're both 10-week courses at the end of the 20 weeks you, you do a show and everyone who goes into finishes 101 says i cannot do a show in 10 weeks time and i've been hearing that for 20 odd years now so it's like yes you can and you'll be fabulous and they are yeah uh, we've got the we call it improv rookie night we've got that on next week uh, okay. and it's sold out which is great um and so um yeah so everyone and, and then there's a 301 which is more because there's different kind of styles of improv too there's people think that it's just like who's, who's on is it anyway? anyway yeah but that's really like almost improv stand-up how fast can you be funny right whereas we do much more of a narrative storytelling based so we'll have we have so we call that short form we play yep. the improv games and then you have long form which is more of the improv scenes and then you have a narrative form which is like the improv play so for example we have a show called instant broadway which is an hour-long improvised musical from start to finish really yeah um a bard's tale is an improvised shakespeare play i so just saw the advertising yeah, yeah, so that. yeah. Full, full full costume um but it's a play yeah um, but it's just unscripted but it's all done in the style of Shakespeare we worked with um, Stuart Devinney one of New Zealand's top Shakespeare directors for a long time um, making sure that the, it, it looks and sounds like Shakespeare yep but it's a lot more fun okay yeah excellent yeah and so how does this sort of tie in with the work you do in the corporate world uh well I guess yeah so in, into the corporate world I'm taking the principles of improv um into that uh but have aligned them to business needs so um and i also have a health science background as well so i'm kind of uh, mixing all my different backgrounds there i'm not doing straight improv in the corporate world but Mm -hmm. use some of the exercises to reflect human behavior so it kind of the exercise improv exercises they they act like a mirror they reflect you back at yourself uh, and that's how you can develop your self-awareness so um so do the leadership work self-leadership um resilience creativity and also the storytelling communication. Okay. So the storytelling communication obviously is based on my time on the stage. Yep. Um, understanding how how to make what makes good stories, and so that is a direct um, translation into a skill building process. Um, so I've written a book on that. 
Um, you've written a few books, haven't you? So you've got the the Jolt Challenge. Jolt Challenge. Yeah, yeah tell us a little bit about that. So that's all around. That was uh, about three and a half years. Actually, actually the, there's, a, there's a book and a workbook. So the whole thing took five years of research and development. Mm -hmm. um, and that was um, that was picked up by like the Singapore military ended up being a leadership consultant to them, uh, where they they said it was like the best program around self awareness on the market because it's one of the hardest things to develop is self awareness. Yep. And it's kind of a um, it's a deep dive into oneself. Uh, so it was done like a boot camp, so a ten week program. So you can you can just work through it yourself. Yeah. And in fact, I got um, uh, a message that during one of the last lockdown, how it actually saved someone's life. They were feeling very depressed and were looking at taking themselves out of the picture, and they went back and went through their job program, and it helped them uh, gain some clarity and some focus. And um, yeah, so very very humbling. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the job. Right. And that's still around? Yes, yeah, still around. The, yeah, yeah. the so workbook do, and work yeah, through it, so yeah? I do, I do one on one coach. I take people through it one on one and yep. I also run group, groups as well. And there's also, I've kind of scaled it down into a two day program as well. So for organizations that like um, rather do, do the 10 week um, uh, challenge, they can do a two day version. And that's all around you know, your beliefs and value systems and uh, how you talk to yourself and, and kind of future setting, how you want to sit, you know, li live your life, set intention and goal setting, all that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. that's the Jolt program. Yep. Yeah. Then there's Mind Dojo. We have an app for that as well. That's all around resilience. That's right. Yeah. Yep. So yep. that's that's that that program. Um, and that's based a lot of my health science, but also, again, a lot of the improv is in there as well. Um, and then there's creativity. Uh, and that's more kind of bespoke. So I work with companies who are doing human centered design, um, going agile, things like that. And I kind of give, I give them how to, because you can have all the tools in the world, but if you haven't built the uh, creative culture, yep. uh, it's just not going to happen. So um, people just won't use the tool. So I go in and work with companies around helping them create, uh, set the right environment for creativity and innovation to actually flourish uh, as well. Mm. And what will be the kind of the basics of that? What is, um, how does one create creativity? Well, there are some myths you have to destroy. Uh, I think people think that uh, creativity is a solo pursuit. Like I, ha I you have creativity. Mm. You don't have it. You are creative. So um, it's a verb much more than a noun. So okay. you have to be creative. So you've got to do things that are creative, but you have to have a safe and non-judgmental environment to do it. Otherwise, you know, if you put your hand in the fire once, you get burnt. You go, oh, I won't do that again. Yep. You, know, you just won't do it in, um, in creativity in brainstorm sessions or idea generation sessions so um and it's not a it's it's not a solo pursuit it's a group activity so it's all about how do you um help people um uh, work collaboratively so uh, one of the one of the tools in improv which is used in i was over at stanford university they use it in the the d school over there is um the yes and tool so how, because that's, in fact, that's the name of the trust that runs the theater is the yes and trust. So that is simply saying, how do I say yes? So how do I affirm you yep. and accept what you're saying? And then the and part is the generative part. How do I build on what you're doing rather than saying no, but, mm -hmm. you know, or, or classic Kiwi, the passive aggressive Kiwi will go, yes, <laughs> but and as soon as you say, but you negate everything you've said before. So the yes and is a, is a very simple tool uh, that you can teach people to help um, create a safe environment and generate ideas. Yep. Yeah. I'm interested. The whole passive aggressive Kiwi thing. It really is a thing, isn't it? Yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can't even say we can't even say no. Yeah. <laughs> going, yeah, Where does no. it come from, do you think? Because I'm British and I and I think right. there's an element of British in there, but we're a little oh, bit more direct. Yes. Yeah. 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 I I just think it is a cultural thing. It's kind of um it's that whole two degrees of separation. Uh, yep. If I say no to you, you'll know someone who will know someone will come back to me. So I kind of hedge my bets, you know. It's like yeah. You're selling in New Zealand, and it's like, um, you know, they'll say, uh, you know, oh, you know, that's a really good idea. When do you come back in three months? They're saying no, but yep. they're saying come back in three months. Whereas in Australia, I've worked in Australia, and it's just kind of like, no. nah. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm yeah. The same. yeah. So I actually grew up in the UK, worked in Australia for 11 years, then came to New Zealand, and I've right. really struggled between the differences. And yeah. 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 I was think, like, just say no. I don't mind if you say no. Yeah. I won't, I, I might be a little bit upset, but I'll get over it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I won't waste my time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so they're using the yes and, and that's sort where of creativity can actually help to overcome some of that. Yeah, it's just yeah, it's 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 just uh, people people feel the fate, especially in the corporate world. There's a lot of fear. Mm. You know, there's a lot of uh, a lot of status and ego all wrapped up in that. So yeah. no one wants to be the person who puts out a silly idea and all that kind of stuff. So a lot of organisations, you know, they talk a great game, like kind of we encourage failure and all that kind of stuff, but they don't. No. So um, you need to have a, a strong culture to allow real creativity to flourish because creativity is the precursor to innovation. You mm. can't have innovation without creativity. Uh, and they're not the same thing. Innovation is the result of a process and, and the outcome. But, yep. but if you're not, if you haven't got the creative thinking in the first place, which is all about discovery and going into the unknown, then you're not going to have 
really good innovation. You're just going to have what you've always done before or, you know, just slight, slight refinements or tweaks. Yeah. Okay. It's interesting. I worked in a large corporate. We did the whole LSI testing right, yeah. and we got the classic kind of passive aggressive bow tie. And at the time I was thinking, I mean, it was almost the entire leadership team in the organization. It was just fascinating to see how that sort of gets developed and is allowed to flourish in those environments. Yeah. 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 So time to do something different. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Yes. So what's your why? Like why, why, why does Wade exist? What is uh, on this planet for? Well, in my, in my professional life is to inspire meaningful happiness. I see, I go into a lot of corporates and I see a lot of uh, corporate, what I call corporate zombies. So people who aren't really uh, switched into um, what actually excites them, what yep. they're doing. Um, like, and it's very easy to fall into the trap. I fell into it myself. You know, this is, oh, I'm chasing the wrong, wrong dream here. Um, so you've got to come back to, you know, what is, you know, how do you contribute? And I think you know, people talking about like happiness being the end goal, but I think it's more around being uh, having it more meaningful than that. Hence the inspire meaningful happiness. Yep. So how do you contribute and how do you belong? I think if you can answer those questions, uh, then you're going to tap into, uh, then, then you'll just live a, a happiness as a byproduct yeah. of those things. So my thing is just to help people get clear in the different ways, whether I'm coaching or facilitating or speaking uh, for people to get some clarity around that. Mm. Mm, beautiful. Wow. I can see you love it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And you've got a new book coming out, right? Uh, yes. That's one of the joys of lockdown. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, that's been sitting in my drafts for a long time. So that's uh, making it easy. Uh, and I've got another one to work on as well. Um, the actual The Mind Dojo book, the book on resilience. So that's yep. been many years of research. And that's um, in, a, in a state now where I started, started the writing. But uh, making it easy is all around. Uh, it's, a short, it's a small, short book. And yep. it's all around um, tips and strategies for those who facilitate. Those okay. who stand at the front of the room and, and uh, just the tricks that I've picked up over the last 20, almost 30 years. Nice. And the Mind Dojo thing. So you've got the app. The app is done. Yep. Yes. Yeah. The program is, uh, is running and it's been running very successfully. And now, um, yeah, there's a book coming um, uh, next year on that. Yes. So how, again, and, and um, how to live that kind of, uh, yeah, that authentic life, making sure that you're living the life you want to live. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there have been some tips and things you've learned throughout the whole lockdown around well, they give you that because I'm, I'm, you know, I perform on stage, but I'm actually more, you know, if I do the test, I'm an ambivert, you know. So, yeah. <laughs> so I, but the thing with improv is improv teaches you, it's a, it's a form of active mindfulness, how to be present in the moment. Because mm. uh, what happens is you're going to get to a state that's taken me decades to get there, but you improvise from awareness rather than from thinking, rather than cognition. So you're fully present in the moment. Yeah. Um, because it just goes too fast to be thinking. Yeah. Uh, and so what happened so it's um, taught me to be much more present so um, I didn't hate lockdown at all I was just you just deal with what is you don't worry about what was or what could be you deal with what's what, what's in front of you mm -hmm. um, and so I was very happy in lockdown and I'm very happy now outside of it too so yeah, yeah. either or yeah, yeah. It's, it's they're both they're right. both good and um, so obviously the covert's back up and running again yes. now for our second lockdown yep. 107 days yeah yes. well, second big one we had some others <laughs> well that's right. of course yeah, yeah they would affect yeah. you as well yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and so what's what's the plans for the future uh onwards and upwards we've got uh, a couple of a couple of weeks of shows and then, yep. we, then then ironically we take a break <laughs> <laughs> so for summer and then yeah. we, uh, we're opening opening in uh mid-january uh, and then, yeah, we've got an exciting summer program all lined up because we had the Fun Size Festival, which is actually a um, comedy play. So we went out to uh, anybody in New Zealand could write a short comedy play. Yep. And we created that. We had over 40 submissions. We picked five. We've got, we're staging five plays. That was going to be in um, you know, September. So that's been postponed till January, February. Yep. So that's our first uh, non-scripted part that we're doing at the theatre. Uh, but we've, you know, we've we're cast from the theatre. Uh, but it's a, it's a new works festival, basically, which is great. Um, yeah, and then we've also got, you know, we have a comedy festival coming up in May. And uh, one of the things we're also doing is um, we've gone out to uh, different charities. And so we're offering charity nights. So Wednesday is going to be like our charity night where a lot of other charities have been hit. Yep. And so if we offer them, they can have a free show um, and, you know, we can take the bar proceeds and mm -hmm. they can raise money, sell tickets and raise money for that as well. So we want to make the theatre, a, it's, it's, a, it's run by a charitable trust. We want to make it for the community. Yeah. So that's kind of um, one of the plans. And one of the things I've been interested in is also um, partnering with, we're part talking to Indiana University who do improv for autistic teens. And so we're looking at running a workshop because all, if you're, um, I watched a show, um, Love on the Spectrum, which was about um, uh, autistic autism. people. Yeah, yeah, autism. And you see the things that they need to learn around social skills and connection in a safe environment. I was just going, oh, improv does that. So I just did a bit of research, found that there's a, a faculty in the US who specializes in that. And uh, we've connected and looking to um, bring some of that here as well. 
Excellent. Hey, I meant to ask, in the whole lockdown, did that mean that you ended up doing improv um, virtually? Like, can you do improv virtually? Not, you can do shows, but yeah. like, I, I, I don't enjoy performing them or even watching them. So uh, overseas, there was more more kind of those kind of shows. My, uh, We did some workshops uh, yep. online as, as for the juniors program. And okay. it's not as good, obviously. Yep. Um, we're a social species. You know? We <laughs> like to be with others. <laughs> yes. uh, and so, um, but it was better than nothing. Yeah. So it's, uh, I just wonder if it opened up any other more any more opportunities for you in terms of, um, you know, taking it beyond no, Auckland. Uh, yeah. Well, unfortunately for us, we we got declined uh, some council funding for um, cameras. And oh. So well, what we wanted to do was uh, after the first lockdown, we thought we really need to record shows, yep. all the shows. And so if there's another lockdown, we could then um stream, stream, you know, stream yeah. them and show show them but um the council of the wisdom didn't fund us and it's the so, second lockdown happened it's kind of like mm, told you <laughs> yeah. yes okay so if anybody out there listening who wants to donate some cameras to the yes, covert theater yes. way to be very happy yeah Absolutely. perfect yes. okay yeah. um so we always ask our guests to kind of share some tips with the listeners they can go away and take some of the inspiration they've got from this and put them into action and you've talked about your three p's do you want to share yes a little bit about those for me that's gonna be my guiding guiding thing for a while now it's making sure that you have a, a purpose Yep. or a passion that's the first p but how, so i'm going to ask a few questions around yep. that so i mean how do you go i'm i'm lucky i know what mine is but yes. for a lot of people they um even my husband actually he's like i'm not really sure what his his, his purpose is I, how do you yeah. help find that yeah, this is where simon Sinek and i part ways i don't mm. think purpose is felt with a capital p I right think it's felt with a small p and i think it's um it's, again it comes down to how do you contribute how do you want to contribute yep. and also what excites you and what are you enthusiastic about i think if you can figure out what is it you're enthusiastic about then you're playing in that ballpark of your purpose and passion but i just think in the western society we've overblown the word purpose and made it too big yeah um what, what excites you what do you mm. like to do and it doesn't have to be everything for you either does it no, i mean it, so steve has a day job which it he... doesn't have to be your work either yeah uh this is where I, again you know I, I, there's different ways you can contribute you can contribute through through your work absolutely yep um or, or you can contribute in the community in a different way so what is it that 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 kind of feeds the soul. Yeah. So that's how um, I kind of define it. Have you got any tools that people could actually kind of yeah that you'd recommend? Job program. Yeah, <laughs> ah, of course. Yeah, good. No, no, yes. yeah, yeah. yeah so the job uh, challenge manual, which yeah. actually sort of processes of how can you discover discover it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Right. Got it. Uh, yeah. yeah. And you we'll put a link sure. to that onto the on the podcast. Yeah. Also, want to make sure that it's also value aligned. A lot of people set goals and they don't really achieve them. Um, because they're not value aligned goals. So I think you need clarity around your values for mm. sure. Uh, that's going to be important. Yep. Um, they kind of go in together, values and purpose kind of go in together for me. And then the next P would be have a plan. Um, but, you know, the, there's a, a Chinese proverb, you know, there are many moons up the mountain, but only one moon to be seen from its summit. So you may have a plan, but don't be rigid. Don't yep. hold it rigid. You, you might be shifting paths. You might get to the same goal, but how do you get there? It'll be different. So um, have a plan that you hold loosely. And, yep. the, and the last one, which I think is a key one, um, is perseverance. Just uh, keep going. Yep. Just keep going. Um, this is that. And another thing I'd also, uh, another tip would be, um, there's a lot of noise out there. I think social media, I mean, I see some of the statistics around what, what it does for our mental health and well-being. Mm -hmm. uh, just ignore the noise. Yeah. There's so much noise out there that just don't don't play that game. Play your own game. Yeah. Yeah. So you said and done though, isn't it? Yeah, well, they're designed to be addictive, those things. So, yep. um, <laughs> so, so you got any sort of personal tips yourself? I mean, I've actually taken off the Facebook app off my um, phone and I try really yeah. hard not to look at things I can't actually have any influence over anymore. Yeah. yeah. So I, my phone lives on silent. Yep. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't use it. I, I, I wear a watch now. I wear I have an alarm clock, so I don't use it as my um, clock. Uh, yep. Yep. Um, because it just you know, keeps drawing you back. Yes. Um, off on weekends, it does actually have an off switch. You know, people, some people forget that, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. so it can do that. Um, yeah, just having, there's lots of different tips. And we actually, again, it's in the Mind Dojo app, there's some whole tips around this. It's just And just you know, choose your poison. You know, mm -hmm. you don't have to have all of them. So which ones do you want? And be very clear on how you want to use it. So yeah. I have two social media platforms that I'm on. Uh, one is Facebook for simply for the theatre. So if you're not an yep. improviser, we're not connected. Yep. Even, you know, even my mother isn't on is a Facebook <laughs> friend of mine. Yep. Uh, and the other one is uh, LinkedIn, and that's purely for my work. And, and that's it. And, yep. and um, so I have restricted use around them. Yeah. Perfect. I like mm. it. Yeah, great. Okay, any last parting words of wisdom? Uh, be nice to your mother. 
<laughs> and if somebody wants to get hold of you um, and also well, there's a few things in there, right? So we've got the Jolt Workbook. We'll put a link to that uh, yep. in the actual podcast. The Covert Theatre, is it just the co? Is it Covert Theatre? The Covert Theatre? What's covert that? Covert Theatre. You've got to say that clearly. Yeah. Oh, now. Covert Theatre. Yes, you can't theater. say Covert yes. Theatre. Yes, Covert. Yep. I have to enunciate. Uh, <laughs> covert Theatre. Um, that is for, there's workshops and shows. So we do shows Thursday to Sundays yep. and um, workshops Monday to Tuesdays. Perfect. Mm. Okay. And if they wanted to come and talk to you, how would they find you? LinkedIn? You find me on LinkedIn. Yep. <laughs> yes. Excellent. Yes. Or go to uh, inspiredlearning.global yep. uh, or wayjackson.co. There's a couple of websites there. Fantastic. Hey, yeah. look, thank you so much for coming in. Pleasure. Really appreciate it. I look forward to talking again soon and uh, seeing the, I'm going to see the, the, the Shakespeare show. Oh, great. Yeah. I'm going to awesome. look forward to that. Lovely. Brilliant. Okay. Thanks, Ray. Cool. Cheers. See you.